بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يغلب مدحته الطائلون ولا يحسي ناماه العادون ولا يعدي حصه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمام ولا يناله غوص الفتن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا غصت مغدود ولا أجل ممدود فترى الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته اللهم في السنة سلواتك وسلامة تسليماتك على عضل التعينات المفادة من العمائر الضاني وآخر التنزلات المضافة إلى نوع الإنسان كان الله ولم يكن ماءه شيء ثاني محسي لعبال مهدرات الخانس بوجوده وكل شيء نحسيناه في إمام المدين الرسول النبي المكي الخرشي المدني التحامي صاحب لواء الحمد ومقام المحمود عبد القاسم محمد الحميد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أخيه وابن عمه وسهره وخليفته من بعده وقائد الغر المحجلين يا سب الدين إمام المتقين أمير المؤمنين علي بن عبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى ابنته الطاهرة الحوراء العمسية الراضية المردية الشفية يوم الجزاء فاطمة الظهرى سلام الله عليها اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم عجمين من يومنا هذا إلى قيام يوم الدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and most merciful. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has granted us this tawfiq, this inspiration that we are here tonight to learn about the teachings and the traditions of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. And the topic of discussion that I chose before we extend our condolences to the Imam of our time, of the martyrdom of our ninth Imam, Imam Jawad alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Another significance that is coming up is also the significance of the marriage of Amirul Mu'mineen with Hazrat Fatima salamullahi alayha. I wanted to share my thoughts with you, my dear brothers and sisters, about the significance of marriage in Islam, about the significance of companionship that is associated with the institution of marriage, and how that institution is divine for those who adhere to the teachings of Islam and Ahl al-Bayt, and how it is different from all the other isms which exist out there in society and which are built not on the foundation of Tawheed, not on the foundations of the unity or the divine principles that were brought out by the divine prophets, but it is built upon the drive and the greed for more and for self-orientedness. That is the reason society is all eroding and is inflicted right now with the disease and this disease is going to completely 
bring down the structure of a family. Now for us who believe in Islam, we know how important it is to hold on to a family, to maintain a family, and then how does Islam give preference to this relationship and to this institution? Because when we see out there, it has only become an engine, a source of fulfilling infatuations and also the lust and the desires, rather than the divine institution that would bring about those children who are raised in this society who would come to become pious, virtuous, God-fearing, someone who would enhance and take humanity to the level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that level and that honor to humanity when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am appointing my Khalifa upon earth. And here we find mankind is completely eroding its own moral values and moral principles. So one of the most important foundations of upholding those moral values is the institution of marriage. Is the institution of a wife and a husband, how they rear their children, how do they raise their children, how do they bring about their children who not only know the basic manners of society, but who are holding themselves accountable for their actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are looking in every act of theirs that their creator is watching them. So that society would be a completely different society. On the other hand, we also find that Islam is always targeted with the Islamophobia which tries to project Islam as if it is a religion of nomads, as if it is a religion of Bedouins, as if it is a religion that does not know how civilizations operate. And all these accusations are surely because of the truth and righteousness of Islam. Because those who fear that if the society comes to know about the true Islam, they would come and clinch and hold on to the teachings of Islam. They are pushed away by bringing in false accusations. And one of them is the institution of marriage when they try to accuse that Islam as a religion tries to suppress a wife, tries to undermine a wife in a marriage or tries to underestimate a wife in the institution of marriage whereas that is not the case it is completely opposite to that not only this they are they accuse Islam that Islam has double standards one for the men and the other for the women these are the accusations of those who do not want Islam to come about and bring about reforms in society so that the human beings do not become the slaves of their desires but they truly become the slaves and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who would act because they want to please Allah not to please their own desires. And we find, my dear brothers and sisters, I would leave off some of the very traditional verses of uh, Holy Quran which we generally use when we are uh, uh, commemorating or when we are uh, conducting a marriage. Uh, I have tried to look from another dimension where I start with Surah Furqan, verse 74, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that this is the dua of those who are saleh, those who are virtuous. رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَذْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا خُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّخِينَ عِمَامًا O oh, our Lord, grant us comfort in our spouses and descendants, our children, and make us imams of the god worry of the muttaqeen. So, here we find that those who are virtuous, those who are believing men and women, 
they are seeking comfort in their spouses and in their children. They are not seeking comfort in acquiring more wealth. They are not seeking comfort in trying to attain more control. They are not seeking wealth or they are not seeking comfort in trying to satisfy their insatiable desires. They are seeking comfort in their spouses and in their children. So our comfort lies in our spouses and our children. So the most serene or the most uh, calm and the most appropriate environment for a believer should be the comfort of the home. A believer, when he comes home, should not be depressed, should not be stressed out, should not be feeling that I have left one phase of my slavery and have ended up into another phase of my slavery. This is not what a home or a spouse is all about. A home and a spouse should provide that comfort. If the marriage has to succeed, that comfort has to come about and that is mutual. It is from both sides. When the man enters the house, if he tries to bring the whole baggage of all the problems that he is confronting at his workplace and try to throw it on his spouse in his house, that is not going to work. And on the other side also, the spouse should not be waiting for the husband to arrive so she could vent all her frustration upon the husband. This is a source of comfort for each other. They are a source of comfort for each other in Islam. Please say the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Now, azwaj, when you see in the Holy Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about azwaj in many, many places in Quran. And for some of the most greatest blessings that Allah promises, He talks about azwaj even there. The places where He talks about paradise, heaven, and jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is singling out azwaj there also. Not only there, even in the creation of azwaj, in the creation of spouses and maids, Allah glorifies Himself. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallazi qalaqal azwaj kullaha. Glory be to Him who created pairs of all things. Allah takes pride in creating pairs. In creating, in the creation in which He has created pairs, Allah is taking pride. We find Allah taking pride after creating man. Allah ahsan al khaliqin. Indeed, Allah praises Himself there, how great a creator He is. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising and glorifying that how He has created as well. So the relationship, the male and the female, is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have to seek comfort in each other. Now when I said that they should find comfort in each other, one of the greatest rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to those who are muttaqeen, those who strive for attaining God worriness, for attaining taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, verse 15, قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْ ذَلِكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُتَحَّرَةٌ that do, should I tell you, should I inform you of something that is better than that for those who are god worthy those who are muttaqi Should I inform you what they are going to get? For them there will be gardens near their Lord with streams running in them to remain in it forever. With whom? Azwajun mutahharat. 
and their companions there would be pure and chaste maids and spouses. So where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the reward in Jannah, something which is very tangible, we cannot, we can imagine, but none of us have seen streams of honey and streams of milk running or flowing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apart from some of the attributes that the Jannah, the Jannah or the reward that is going to be an everlasting reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about pure mates. So pure and chaste and virtuous mates and spouses are the product of Jannah. So if we have pure mates in the life of this world, this, is, this becomes our Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what Islam talks about of relationship in, 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 in marriage. That a wife and a husband can make their own Jannah in the life of this world. And it is not undermining women. It is equal. In fact, men are being told, or I would say a general statement is, whoever deserves an everlasting reward for the god voriness for the taqwa that they have, Allah is promising them pure companions, pure spouses and pure mates. Azwajun mutahharatun. And then when we see in other instances also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ amanu wa amanu salihat and then the, the ayah goes worse, uh, the verse continues and talks about how Allah is going to grant them Jannah. And then the ayah continues and says, Lahum fiha azwajun mutahharatun. For them in that Jannah, what are they going to have? They are going to have companions, they are going to have spouses who are pure. So, my dear brothers and sisters, Islam talks about marriage with mutual respect. Islam talks about a heaven which could be created with spouses who are pure, who have purified themselves, who have reformed themselves, who are not the victims of slay or slaves of their desires, but they have purified and they have attained taqwa and because of which they are going to create a home which would become a heaven in the life of this world. Please say Allah salawat. And then you will find other verses also in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how Allah had created you from a single soul. From a single soul and then he had made mates for you. Why? لَيَسْكُنَا إِلَيْهِ So that they could find comfort in them. Marriage is a source of comfort. Marriage is not a source of anxiety. Marriage is not a source of stress. Spouse for each other is supporting and in reassuring and making sure that they both succeed in becoming better human beings. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants in a marriage that is of a believer, that is of a mu'min. <clears throat> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in many other verses also about the same issue. Now what is the responsibility of the husband? Is there any responsibility of husband that needs to be taken care of? Obviously yes. Here in Surah Taha we find verse 170 فَخُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ إِنَّا هَذَا عَدُوٌ لَكَ وَلِذَوْجِكَ We said, O oh Adam, this is indeed an enemy, shaitan is your enemy, of yours and of your spouse, of your mate. So what should Adam do? فَلَا تُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ 
Fatash all. So, O oh Adam, so do not let him expel you from paradise or you will be miserable. So, the husband in the house is supposed to ensure that his family is intact. The taqwa that is needed, the godwariness that is needed in the family is maintained by the husband, by the man of the house. The man of the house is trying to ensure the family is getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The man of the house is not there to fulfill unusual or unreasonable demands of the family that would lead the family to go away from the mercy of Allah by committing guna. That is not the purpose of the man of the house. The man of the house should ensure that not only he is getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is also ensuring that his spouse is not being expelled from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the compassion that Allah promises to those who are muttaqeen. The husband is supposed to protect the religion and the deen of the spouse, not fulfill whatever the spouse demands. This is the duty of the husband. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa it does not mean men are going to rule and oppress women. Men are there to lead. If you have a ship, you can have only one captain who can take the ship into the direction or the goal that has been intended. There cannot be three captains going in three different directions. Man has been given that responsibility, but that responsibility by no means means a man can oppress his wife. It is to lead and guide his wife to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please say the salawa. The other duty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon to men is Ya Yuhallazina Amanu Hu Anfusakum wa Ahalikum Nara. Oh those of you who have faith, Ya Yuhallazina Aman, protect yourself who anfusakum wa ahalikum nara. Protect yourself and then your families from the fire of hell. So as the Head of the household, the father is responsible to ensuring that his children and his family is being protected from the fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in the words saying that the fire whose fuel is stones and men or stones and mankind. So this is the duty of the husband. The reason I'm trying to bring about this uh, comparison, my dear brothers and sisters, is to show you that Islam talks about equal footing, mutual respect, both for men and women in marriage. And marriages are being broken, not because we are upholding this principle. They are being broken because we are not upholding this principle. We are trying to do whatever we feel like and our spouse, our spouse wants to do whatever she feels like and now our children wants to do whatever they feel like and as a result of that, if a ship has three captains trying to go in three directions, either the ship is going to capsize, drown or will not move in any direction. This is what is happening in society. And who is benefiting from all this? Of course, capitalism in its uh, outward look benefits, but shaitan in its inward looks, uh, inward benefits. Why? Because this is the promise of shaitan. Shaitan wanted to ensure that mankind stays away from getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the most sacred institutions my dear brothers and sisters, if we can save this institution, we can save mankind from becoming a fuel of that fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. Now, having said this, 
Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger give us role models? Of course he has given us role models. If he would not have given us role models, we would have complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are ta talking about a situation which is so perfect that we cannot be in that situation. How do you expect us to perform when we cannot? We are not. We are not angels. How can we act like angels? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his best and the most closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of human beings to present humanity with real world examples who showed how to live a life and how to live with a meager living and how to live with mutual respect for each other. And that is what we see in the marriage of Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and Hazrat oh. Fatima Salamu Allah Alayhi But when the marriage of Amir al uh, was to take place, there were many people who approached the Prophet of Allah to ask for the hand of his most beloved daughter. And the Prophet of Allah declined. And when the time came, the Prophet of Allah accepted the proposal of Amir al and that upset it some people they actually have a narration in which they actually come and complain to the holy prophet how is it that when we came and we approached the hand of your daughter you declined and when the son of your uncle approaches you give uh, her hand into ali ibn abi talib and here the prophet of allah says that it was not me فَقُلْتُ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهِ مَا أَنَا مَنَعْتُكُمْ وَزَوَّجْتُهُ بَلِ اللَّهُ مَنَعَكُمْ I did not decline. I swear by Allah I did not decline. It was Allah who had declined. وَزَوَّجَهُ فَحَبَتَ عَلَيَّ جِبْرَعِيلُ فَخَالَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صلي على محمد وآله محمد إن الله جل جلاله يقول لو لم أقلق عليا لما كان لفاتمة ابنتك, ابنتك كف على وجه العرس Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Prophet of Allah mentions that Jibreel came and declared O Prophet of Allah tell them had it not for me that I have created Imam Ali if I have not created Imam Ali then there was nobody equal in stature to be the husband of Fatima Fatima was such a great woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created Amirul Mu'mineen for her. Or if Amirul Mu'mineen would not have been there, there was no equal of Hazrat Zahra. And this is not only out of being the daughter of the Holy Prophet, this is out of her taqwa, this is out of her piety. This is out of her god -wariness. This is out of her God-consciousness. And this also shows how they both deserved each other. Even Amir al deserved her and she deserved Amir al We have to deserve, my dear brothers and sisters, of those spouses who are pious, those spouses who are god worthy but it is mutual. And here Allah takes the issue in his own hands. And that's why you will find, uh, when I was uh, you know, preparing these uh, ahadiths, I was realizing there are some ahadiths in the books of others which try to undermine the stature of Amir al mumineen by trying to accuse that Amirul Mu'mineen was interested in marrying women 
from Kuffar and Fatima came to know about it and she told the Prophet and then the Prophet of Allah was upset. It was not the, that was not the reason. The reason was they had approached the Prophet of Allah and the Prophet of Allah had declined to give the hand of her daughter to them and they want to come back and uh, you know with that enmity and they try to accuse Amir al-Mumin for having somebody. Just like the Prophet of Allah, while he had Hazrat Khadija in his marriage, never remarried, you will find Amir al-Mumin also never remarried because of the stature and because of the relationship, because of the commitment and because of what Fatima stood for. She was the total manifestation and a role model for all the women of the world from the beginning till the end. This was who Fatima was and she is a role model for our women. Not only our women, she is a role model for all humanity. Ayatollah Jawadi Amali says that the traits that we possess, we do not possess virtues on our body. Our body consists of gender, being male and female. The virtues that we possess, we possess it on our soul and the soul is genderless. And therefore, the way our Imams are source of our emulation and following and the seerah, the same way Hazrat Fatima alayha, is also a source of emulation for even men in her actions and in her word, in her commitment and in her dedication to the family, to Islam and to her husband and to her father. Please say a loud salawat for her. Another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger says مَا زَوَّجْتُ فَاتِمَا إِلَّا بَعْدَ مَا أَمَرَنِي اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِالتَّزْوِيجِهَا I did not, uh, I, I didn't got Fatima married to Ali until a command of Allah, the Almighty arrived for this marriage. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself proposes this marriage. This why, that is why it is a divine marriage. Now let me uh, share one of the last uh, hadith that I would like to share with you in which uh, the Prophet of Allah calls upon uh, Imam Ali. The narration says, قَالَ جَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمُ يَتْلُبُنِي فَقَالَ عَيْنَ أَخِي يَا أُمَّ عَيْمًا The Prophet of Allah calls upon and sees Umm Ayman and asks, O oh, Umm Ayman, where is my brother? Where is my brother? And, and she says, Qala, wa man akhuka khala aliyun. Who is your brother, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you're talking about? And the Prophet of Allah replies to Umm Ayman, I'm talking about my brother Ali. Qala, Ya Rasulullah, tu zawwijuhu ibnataka wa huwa akhuka. O oh, Prophet of Allah, you have already married Fatima to her and he still continues to be your brother? And the Prophet of Allah replies, Qala naam, Ama wallahi ya umma aymana lakhad zawajduha kufwan sharifan wajihan fi dunya wal akhira wa minal mukharrabeen. O Umma Ayman, I have married to her one who is honored and respected and is pious and virtuous both in this world and in the hereafter and he is amongst the Mukharrabeen, the most closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing that I, when I was reading this hadith uh, of the Holy Prophet, my dear brothers and sisters, why is the Prophet of Allah insisting upon Amir al-Mu'mineen being a brother, although he is his son-in-law. He should have said, where is my son? Where is my son-in-law? Call upon my son-in-law. But the Prophet of Allah continues to call Amir al his brother. And the importance is, when you have siblings, you are on the one level. But you have children, the level is 
in one generation. There's a gap of one generation. And the Prophet of Allah continuously had said that Ali and I are brothers in this world and also in the hereafter. Ali and I have been created with the same nur. Ali and I were the first one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created. And that principle the Prophet of Allah is maintaining. However, the Prophet of Allah is also talking about the traits, about the qualities we should look into when we are finding husbands for our daughters. The Prophet of Allah says that, don't you see that I have found my daughter Fatima, a husband who is Sharif, who is pious who is God-fearing. Wajihan fi dunya. He who is somebody who is respected and who is bright and who is honored in this world and in the hereafter. This gives us, my dear brothers and sisters, a criteria that we should be looking for when we are giving our daughters in marriage to other believers. The criteria should be that they are sharif, they are wajih, in this world as well as in the hereafter. Not somebody who is educated in the secular education, having degrees, but does not respect Islam, but does not keep or uphold the principles of Islam, but does not value the value system or the morality that Islam wants us as believers to uphold. We should be looking at the criteria that a person is god worry the person is pious, and he is God-fearing. And that is the secret of the success of marriage. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses this community and give 100% success in marriages of those who are married and inspire those believers, single men and women to uh, go forward with initiating marriage so that they, this becomes a source of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the martyrdom of our ninth Imam that he uh, keeps the marriages prosperous of all the believers so that they could raise children who become true believers and ansar and awan of the imam of our time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure those who are sick in our community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive those who have passed away from our community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he has forgiven them then mahshur them on the day of judgment with Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. Please recite the Surah Fatiha for the Marhumin of all those who are attending tonight's program and also especially of the Marhumin of those who are the sponsors of tonight's food. Please recite a loud salawat. Allah.